So empathy is this idea that we have, and we love to talk about, where we say that ev if everyone had empathy, the world would be a much nicer place. We'd all understand each other. And I somewhat, like, I understand the idea behind it. But when it relates to Asperger's syndrome, I don't exactly agree with the general idea. And um, so the, there are a couple questions that I want to make sure that all of you can answer at the end of this. The first of which is, uh, what is empathy? And the second of which is, how does it relate to Asperger's syndrome? And by the way, when I refer to Asperger's syndrome uh, to myself, I refer to it as uh, myself as an Aspergian. It's the shortened way of saying person with Asperger's. Um, so there are actually two types of empathy. Uh, the first of which is called cognitive empathy. And cognitive empathy is basically you're able to look into someone else's mind and understand why they're thinking the way that they do. And then there's effective empathy, which is uh, the example I like to give because it's kind of hard to explain is um, it's like that moment where you're sitting in a room and you just feel like there's this tension, but you can't quite explain how you know. And that's really what effective empathy is. And I was like, and and um, I always like to say that I'm glad that I'm missing effective empathy and not cognitive empathy because if it was the other way around, technically that would make me a psychopath or a narcissist. <laughs> so I'll take the loss of cognitive empathy. Um, so the there was original re there's this original research done by a guy in England named Simon Baron Cohen who is the cousin of the actor Sasha Baron Cohen. And uh, he wrote this paper that uh, proposed that autism and Asperger's is based off of what's called the extreme male mind. And he wrote early on in the paper that, um, that the, some of the findings were that autistic people and Aspergians didn't have empathy. But he also prefaced it right before and said, uh, but we couldn't separate cognitive and effective empathy. The problem was the psychological, psychological community saw the study and when they revised the DSM-5 and the ICD-11, those are the current versions of the diagnostic criteria, they wrote um, autism and Asperger's lack in empathy and they never specified which kind it was. Um, and then there was this new research that was done that said well, they do have empathy, it's effective empathy, they're missing cognitive empathy, they can't understand why people feel the way they do, which create, and then they talked about how it creates, and another study talked about how it creates this frustration, because you are thinking, because, I mean, you feel, you feel what other people feel, and then you can't quite understand why. It, there's just like this disconnect, this missing piece, and you, and you know, it's happened. It may have happened to you before, but you just don't quite get there. And so that brings me to my other major point, which is, how do we fix this this problem? I'm going to share with you a little bit of a personal story. When I I've been to um, five schools, I'm on my fifth school. Uh, I've taken three opportunities to sit down with my classmates and try and explain in the best way possible. Uh, what autism and Asperger's is for me, more Asperger's, how it relates to me, um, where I'm strong, where I'm not strong. And um, when I got to the empathy part, I had a very not so nice group of classmates from seventh to ninth grade, and they just latched on to the idea that I had no empathy, which earned me the nickname the serial killer, or the future serial killer for all three years. Um, and it was really, it was frustrating, and every single day, I just, I struggled because it just made me feel different, and, and I didn't understand, I didn't quite understand why, I was like, I'm supposed to be the one with no empathy, how do you not understand how I feel? <laughs> uh, so I, so I set out, and I wrote a book to try and assure younger children, it was actually based off of my first PowerPoint, um, trying to assure them that, that they're not, there's nothing wrong with not having cognitive empathy. Yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah, you kind of go through life wondering why other people feel the way that you do or feel the way that they do and why you don't quite feel that way. But it's not, the, it's not something that's going to set you up for life. And then I realized that if I'm telling them that, 
I have to fix the other problem, which is on the other side, by the way, here's another little thing. We also call everyone who's not on the spectrum, we call you all neurotypicals, um, <laughs> which is short for neurologically typical. So I, I, uh, I realized you know, I, now I gotta go out and I gotta tell all the neurotypicals that it's okay to, to think differently. And I, and I sat down when I was trying to write this talk and I thought to myself, now what, what words can I tell people where they would understand um, what, what, the, what I'm trying to say, why, why empathy doesn't matter as much. And um, I thought about how people have described me through my life and I realized that a lot of people have described me when they really get to know me, they describe me, I'm a, I'm a nice person, I do a lot of nice things, I used to loan pencils to everyone, I never got them back. <laughs> <laughs> so I would, you know, I, I sat down and I thought, you know, what, Dylan, what could you say? And I went, oh, that's it. So the point in the end that I just want every neurotypical to understand is just act kind, teach kindness, tell kids to be kind. Empathy is too complex for some psychologists to understand, as it turns out. So, I mean, teaching these kids, I, I learned it in first grade. I learned, they said, Dylan, put yourself into someone else's shoes, which another funny little thing, I don't quite understand uh, idioms. So they said, Dylan, put yourself in someone else's shoes. I was like, why would I do that? <laughs> Their shoes, my, my shoes are clean. I don't know about theirs. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, th the point that I just wanted to get across, it's kindness. Every kid, I hope, understands kindness. You teach them to share, you teach them to be nice to one another. And empathy, I think that we should just kind of leave it alone, let the research play itself out, let us learn some more about it, and then talk about it in the adult population instead of with these little kids who don't understand. And yeah, that's the general amount of my presentation. Thank you very much. I hope that you all enjoyed listening to me and my moderate amount of jokes, so.